Hey, Abbott, what time is it? It's time for the Abbott and Costello Show. We're on the air for ABC here in Hollywood. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go with the Abbott and Costello Show. Yes, it's the Abbott and Costello Show. Hey, Abbott, could I go home a little early tonight? What for? I got to do a little work on my Sam Shovel Crime Laboratory. I'm going to mix some nitroglycerine with hydrochloric acid and TNT and heat the mixer on my stove. You dummy, if you do that, you'll blow the roof off your house tonight. Oh, no, I won't. What makes you so sure? I blew it off last night. <laughs> Costello, why don't you quit the Sam Shovel detective business? You're not smart enough to be a detective. You're ignorant, illiterate, and uneducated. I am not uneducated. I went to school and I was smart too, Abbott. Now, let me forget the day I was promoted from the third grade to the fourth grade. The day you were promoted from the third grade to the fourth grade? Yes. How can you remember that? Because that morning I was so nervous I had to get my mother to shave me. <laughs> and anyway, I'm not going to quit the Sam Shovel Detective Theory. Our listeners are crazy about it. Here's a fan letter I got today, and it says, Dear Lou Costello, that Sam Shovel the Detective, you are the funniest guy I ever heard. When I listen to you, I shake the house with laughter. Last week, I laughed so hard, I thought the ceiling would cave in. I've come to the studio to see you tonight. Mr. Costello, there's a man here to see you. What does he look like? I can't, I can't tell. tell. He's all covered, covered with, with plaster. plaster. I figured out the <laughs> What's your Sam Shovel story about tonight, Lou? Well, it's one of my oriental cases, Abbott. One of my oriental cases. I call it the case of the Chinaman who poisoned his own food, or he committed shop suicide. <laughs> well, let's go on with the case. Oh, definitely. <laughs> yes. I'm Sam Shovel. Sam Shovel, private detective. They call me a private eye. I can smell a murder a mile away. I can smell a frame up. I can smell anything crooked. Private eye. They ought to call me private nose. <laughs> I'm sitting here in my little office. I look at myself in the mirror. I notice that my hair needs shortening. I'm all out of Crisco. <laughs> My handsome face smiles back at me from the mirror. No one of the girls are crazy about me. Before I became a detective, I had girls to burn. Yes, I had girls to burn, but I gave it up. I found out there's no fun in burning girls. <laughs> I noticed a mouse crawling across my office door. It's a church mouse. <laughs> I open a drawer of my desk to check my equipment. There's my gun. There's my handcuffs. There's my binoculars. Comrade, I got the plans for the secret weapon. Those are my spy glasses. <laughs> I decide to fill out my application for a 1949 California driver's license. They're making the test tougher this year. To get a license, you have to learn to speak pig Latin. That's so you can talk to the road hogs in Hollywood. <laughs> On my desk, I noticed a picture of one of the cleverest women crooks in the business. She was what the police call a top drawer thief. When I finally caught her, she had a garage full of top drawers. <laughs> she was a cute girl, but very shy. The first time I saw her, she dropped her eyes. I picked them up. <laughs> one was an agate. <laughs> she had a little turned-up nose, a real turned-up nose. Every time she sneezed, she blew her hat off. <laughs> she had a very clever racket. She'd make a friend of a guy, kiss him and give him a cold. Every guy she met, she'd give him a kiss and give him a cold. I finally arrested her for making friends and influencing people. <laughs> you work hard in this detective racket. I always remember my mother's advice. He said to me, Sam, if you want to get a job, remember the early bird catches the worm. I followed that advice for 20 years. I never got a job, but I got about 8 million worms. <laughs> he also gave me my brother, Pat, his advice also. He said to him, go west, young man, go west. He followed her advice and drowned. <laughs> he was living in Pismo Beach at the time. <laughs> Suddenly 
I see someone coming into the office. Hello, Sam Shovel. Hello, Lieutenant Abbott. Pull up a chair and sit down. I'm tired. I've been taking care of the Mount Cup's horses. I've been working in the stables all day. Then pull up a window and sit down. <laughs> Sam, I've been working on a fur robbery case. Somebody stole a mink coat, and the mink coats are hard to identify. I'm an expert on furs, Lieutenant. You know, there's two types of mink, male and female mink. Sam, that's a good thing to know. Yes, especially if you happen to be a mink. <laughs> oh, forget about the case, Sam. Tell me, how do you like my new suit? I had to admit to Lieutenant Abbott that he had good taste for clothes. Of all the detectives in town, Abbott has the best taste for clothes. He can chew up a vest and tell you what kind of gravy is on it. <laughs> Lieutenant Abbott, why do you always wear that big elk's tooth with a diamond in it? What's wrong with that, Sam? Lots of men wear a big elk's tooth with a diamond in it. In the middle of their upper plate. <laughs> this remark made Lieutenant Abbott smile. I love to see him smile. He only has two teeth. <laughs> but he has the most beautiful set of gums I've ever seen. <laughs> well, Sam, you've got to admit I'm a self-made man. When I was born, I was very poor. I had nothing. Lieutenant Abbott is right. He came into this world empty-handed, and he had a head to match. <laughs> Sam, I worked hard to get where I am For 20 years, I've had my nose to the grindstone Must have been a beaut when you started <laughs> Never mind that Sam, we've got to do something about crime in this town Every day it gets worse uh, I know, only last week the girl next door Mary Brown had her good name ruined Mary Brown? Mary Brown had her good name ruined? How did it happen? He married a guy named Hoop and Snorter. <laughs> Hello, Sam Shovel, private detective speaking. Detective Sam Shovel, this is Constable Smith speaking. Uh, speaking of, uh, um, um, uh, I've got another soft murder around here. I need your help. Uh, come out to the Jones Farm at once. Constable, I'll be glad to take the case. How do I get to the Jones Farm for my office? Well, now, let me see. Uh, let me see. I'm at the Jones Farm. Oh, yeah. It's right out the Cougamonga Turnpike. You get to the schoolhouse. Turn left, cross cover. Why don't I take the road to the left? Oh, no, that's the bad one. <laughs> Ain't there a better road than that? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just drive down Route 101. That's a fine road. Will that get me there? No, but it's a fine road. <laughs> Look, Constable, I can't work on the case unless I get to the Jones farm. Ah, uh, that's true, that's true, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what you do. Uh, say, uh, Sam Shovel, uh, do you know where the new Hollywood freeway is? Yes. Uh, tell me something, will you? Yes. When are you going to finish that darn thing? How do I get to the Jones Farm? Oh, the Jones Farm. Uh, well, well, where are you now? I'm in Los Angeles. My golly, I just happened to think. What? You know something? You can't get here from there. <laughs> What's up, Sam? It's murder. Come on, we're going to the Jones's farm. Suddenly I noticed a sign that said this will take you to the Jones's farm. Abbott and I sat on that sign for an hour. It didn't move an inch. There's the way, Sam. I'll turn in this driveway. Lieutenant Abbott, you're a mighty reckless driver. You shouldn't drive that car so fast. Sam, it's my car. I'll drive it that way till it falls apart. You've got to be careful what you say in front of these old cars. Hmm? Sam and I are here to investigate the murder. Hmm? Who's the victim? Oh, Farmer Jones. Uh, you'll find the body out there in the chicken coop. Well, good luck, boys. Well, so he we went into the chicken coop. I started looking for clues. Sam, that big rooster looks suspicious to me. Look, he's got an axe under his left wing. I'll question him, Lieutenant. Mr. Rooster, did you kill Farmer Jones? <laughs> yes, I did. Today is Sunday, and all those chickens were just dying to have some real seven fried farmer. <laughs> Before we sign 
Now, let's tell our listeners who the people are that helped out uh, to put our show on. Yes, you're not kidding me. You mean the people that put our show together? Tonight, they nearly tore it apart. <laughs> Now, that's all the more reason why we should tell the listeners who they are. Okay, our writing staff is headed by Eddie Foreman with Paul Collins, Pat Costello. Our producer is Charles Vance. And now let's forget our band leader is Matty Malik and our singer is Hal Winter's Night, folks. Good night, everybody in Patterson. Good night. The Abbott and Costello Show was produced and transcribed in Hollywood. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.